ZL2 BCI, ZL2 Charlie Tanger mic. Yeah, um, it's it's only putting out five watts, so uh, not not terribly powerful here. But uh, sort of playing around and probably wanted to uh, re re uh, design that power amplifier at some stage. But other than that, uh, it seems to be working reasonably well. Um, how's the audio quality? Back to you. ZL2 BCI, ZL2 CTM. Yeah, you, you're you're pretty weak here as well. The, uh, the, the quite a bit of noise on the frequency, but um, you're still coming through nice and readable. So probably um, a, a five by four, maybe I guess. A little bit down the weeds, but um, no, it's good. So uh, I'm pleased. You've got a quality is pretty good. Um, it's a pretty simple little radio, and just been playing around with a, a different way of uh, switching. Um, the two IF amplifiers, so the uh, the RF's always going in one direction, but I'm not having any RF crossing across, which I've had problems in the past with feedback. But um, this configuration here seems to work pretty well. ZL2 BCI, ZL2 CTM. Yeah, Roger, thanks so much for that. Um, well, I might just do a little bit more. Uh, I probably might just film this now and put up, put a video up. Um, and then I might start to switch my attentions to SDR. I might uh, do some more playing around with that. Um, not sure if I'll use the TNC. Pro probably will, actually. Maybe just redesign the front end and then play around with some more software after that. But uh, that might be quite quite fun to get back into. Anyway, hey, thanks very much, uh, Benjamin, for, for coming up. Um, first contact on this radio here. And uh, if I need to do any more checks, I'll, I'll give you a bell if you're okay with that. ZL2 BCI, ZL2 CTM. Yeah, thanks very much, Benjamin. Have a good night, and uh, we'll catch you around soon. Uh, ZL2, Charlie, take a mic, clear. Okie dokie. Uh, just for interest sake, I'll, uh, I'll put the antenna on, or the ATU on to dummy load. So that's all the atmospheric noise here coming through. But um, let me just turn that off, and we can have a bit of a talk about um, how the radio is going. So that was the first contact with the radio. Um, it's in the middle of the day here, so... Uh, not the best propagation for um, for 20 meters, but let me just unplug what we got, uh, and then we can talk about what we got there. That's a bit stiff that power cord, and then we'll take off the antenna. Right, so um, as you can see there, let me just double check the camera. Uh, the radio is um, is built, um, so you can see that's a, an overall size, uh, and Right, what I want to talk about. Sorry, I've sort of gone off sort of half prepared here. Anyway, so right, let's just maybe look at the configuration, then I can go through a couple of um a couple of parts and we'll go from there. So um you can see there's a dividing wall there that divides uh the transmitter and the power amplifier on this side uh from essentially the, the receiver uh, and the main guts of the radio on the on the on the side here. Um on the back we have a number of ports. Uh, we've got the antenna port here. Uh, with the antenna relay, so that's switching 
the antenna port between the transmitter and the receiver. Um, so let's just go through the receive side and then uh, we can look at the transmit side. So um, RF comes in through um, the antenna port there, through the relay and comes through down to the bandpass filter here, through the bandpass filter into the antenna amplifier uh, and then that gets fed into uh, the, the, the two relays here which basically switch what's happening with the two mixes there, the two tough threes. Um, for interest sake, um, this is how I've wired those up uh, and you might have heard on the radio just saying I'm more than happy with this configuration and I suspect uh, it'll become my standard configuration moving forward um, if I'm trying to share uh, one IEF strip between the transmit and receive. So what we have here up the top are the two relays, so they're double pole double throw relays. Um, that's one here and then one on the other side and then those are connected the, the common or the, the common ports of those two relays are then connected directly to the, the mixes, the TUF3 RF and IF ports. So exactly the same configuration on both sides. And at the moment the relay is in the receive position. So RF is coming in through the receive amplifier, through that normally closed contact and straight into the RF. Um, software is detecting the PTT line and because it's on receive and we'll have a look at the software in a sec uh, the clock 0 is outputting the VFO frequency and clock 2 is outputting the BFO so that's coming in through there our RF is being mixed with our local oscillator and we're getting our IF that's now going back up to the normally closed contact which is now going straight up that's a dead end straight up through the IF amp through the crystal filter and then back down into the second IF amp to this normally closed contact straight then through into the RF port mixed with the beat frequency and out comes our audio frequency that goes up to that normally uh, closed contact straight through the audio amplifier and out the speaker um, this for normally runs on uh, headphones but just for this demonstration I was just using an external speaker there Right, so then on transmit, you can imagine all these normally closed switches now flop across to the normally open position. And microphone amplifier here, so microphone uh, audio through the mic amp would now go through what was a normally closed down to here. Goes into this mixer in the IF port. Now software, as I said before, was detecting the PTT line, so these two frequencies or signals I should say, are now reversed. So what was the BFO frequency now comes out of clock zero, and what was the VFO frequency now comes out of clock two. So those two frequencies are mixed, and out comes our, uh, our IF. Um, so the IF frequency comes up through here, jumps across to here, which because that's now closed, which is now joined with here. This is open, so it just goes straight up into the IF amplifier again, through the crystal filter in the same direction, back through uh, the second IF amplifier. That's, a, that's an open circuit there, but we do have a link connected to this um, port here of that relay. And now because this is across here on the transmit side, straight down and into our IF port of the second mixer. That's mixed with what is now the, the carrier frequency, or the VFO frequency, and out comes our RF at our desired transmit frequency. Comes up through here, that's its open circuit, across to here, out of our power amplifier, and out she goes. Um, had absolutely no problems with that configuration with this radio. So as soon as I'd wired it up, um, it was it was going great guns. So like I say, I'm pretty well think I will use that um, as a standard configuration. Hopefully that lighting's not too bad. Um, so I won't, I won't go into here, but you can see what I've used. Um, I'm using orange for receive lines, uh, yellow for transmit, and then brown is, is common between um, both sides. But you can imagine here, you can see a little link across there, and there's another link across there, as we saw in the diagram, uh, and then those two direct connections from the common ports of those two relays down to the RF and the IF of the two uh, TUF threes and uh, the output of the SI5351 just directly down to um, the uh, local oscillator port of those two mixers. 
Um, we saw the display there, so uh, on the on the receive video, so I won't go into uh, the function of that and the power saving as well as the fine tune. Um, in the end, I didn't bother rebuilding that uh, audio frequency amplifier based on the LM380. Uh, there was plenty of room in this particular uh, container here, so uh, I didn't feel the need to rebuild that. Um, there's heaps of space. Uh, what else? So on that wall over here, we have. Uh, the microphone amplifier, so that's the microphone port here, so that's just nice and close directly into the microphone amplifier. Uh, the output is a 10k trim pot, uh, which allows me then just to, to fine tune the, uh, the modulation depth uh, before it goes into that first mixer. Um, I'm keeping things nice and simple from the PTT switch, uh, just uh, center is 12 um, and then Obviously in the receive position, that livens up that line, which goes down to a little distribution area down here for 12 volts on receive. And then conversely on transmit, uh, the transmit side comes comes up. Uh, Righty-ho. Now in terms of the, 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 the software being detected, let me, just, uh, let me just bring that up at the same time as I talk about it. So just excuse me for two seconds. Uh, documents. Programming, Arduino, radios. Okay, right, so down here, you can just see it sitting underneath the, underneath the display, is a little um, voltage divider out of two resistors. And I'll just go through the maths on that, it's nothing spectacular, but um, it may be of interest to, to people who want to do something similar. So what, now this radio is running on 12 volts from a little battery pack. But the, uh, the Arduino, from a digital port's point of view, uh, wants to see around 5 volts uh, arbitrary as a, as a max. So I need to have a voltage divider which is taking our 12 volts in here through two resistors down to earth. And then the pick-off point there uh, I want to set to be uh, 12 volts. So we just quickly run through the maths there. It's pretty straightforward. So let me just zoom out a little bit. Here goes um, the voltage divider here, 12 volts on the top, R1 and R2 to earth, and then a pick off, we want that to be 5 volts. So mathematically, um, the equation for that is R2 over R2 plus R1, or R1 plus R2, times 12 volts equals 5. So that's our expression. Um, and we want to do some manipulation here to make R2 um, the subject, and then we'll, we'll pick an arbitrary R1, and then we should be able to determine what R2 is going to be. So what we can do for a start, to, to try and simplify this equation here, we can divide both sides by 12, which gets rid of that side. So now we've got R2 over R1 plus R2 equals 5 over 12. Um, and then we can multiply both sides by R1 plus R2. In other words, it, just a quick way, just take that part there and move it across the equal sign to the top. Which then leaves us with R2. So R2 now equals 0.417, which is 5 divided by 12 times this part here which has now been moved across R1 plus R2 we can now expand that out so 0.417 times R1 plus 0.417 times R2 and then we can move this this half here back across the equal sign because we're trying to make R2 the subject and we don't want to have this one loafing on this side so now we can do um, we can move that across so R2 minus so in other words just the same as subtracting that from both sides. Uh, R2 minus 0.417 R2 equals what's left, 0.417 times R1. We can now pull that common R2 out, so R2 brackets 1, which would equate to that one, minus that part, 0.417 equals that. Uh, we can now divide both sides by 1 minus 0.417, gets rid of that, and we're left with R2 equals 0.417 R1, divided by 0.583, in other words, 1 minus 0.417. So now we're getting close now. Um, and then we need to, to go any further, we've got two unknowns. Um, so we need to arbitrarily pick a value for R1 and see what that works out to be for R2. Now I, I don't want to tax that 12 volt power supply too much in terms of current. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, this is this 12 volts transmit note, um, I'm going to make R1 10 kilo ohms, and then we'll see what that works out to be for R2. So let's let R1 equal 10k, substitute it in, multiply it out, 
comes to 7153. So the nearest standard value, I'm not going to go up, I'm going to go slightly lower, which means that instead of actually producing 5 volts, it's going to be ever so slightly less. So I'm going to choose 6800 ohms, and if you now substitute 6800 ohms and 10k ohms into our original expression, um, that 5 volts actually turns out to be 4.9. Uh, and in test it's around 4, well it is 4.9. Um, so that's that's fine. That's well within the tolerance um, for the Arduino to detect that as a logic level um, 1. So I'm just going to quickly look at the software um, and I'm going to apologize that I'm going to be just filming straight off the screen. I know that's not necessarily the best but um, for the time being that's what I'm going to do. So hopefully that's reasonably clear. Let me just come back and see some of the... Oh, let's leave it there. Right, so um, very simply, if we go down to the main loop, um, I have declared... Well, more the point, uh, in the main loop which starts here, there's only two times which um, the SI5351 is updated to to transmit, or more the point, to um, create the two signals. Uh, the first one is when the mode changes, and the second time is when the frequency changes. Now, I'm not going to go through the frequency bit, because we've done that before, but we'll just have a quick look at this part here. Let me just scroll that down a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I have coming in on digital pin 8, that 5 volt, or actually 4.9 volts, um, which I'm, I've called PTT input. So PTT input is the, the name I've given to uh, the port number 8, digital port. So I'm saying my current mode, the mode right now, each time it goes through this loop, equals digital read whatever's there. Now, if it's not equal to the old mode, and we'll see how old mode gets determined in a sec, um, it means something's changed. It means that my current mode has, is not equal to old mode. So if I was on receive, I'm now on transmit. And if I was on transmit, I'm now on receive. So straight away, I, I'm going to go and send the frequency. And I'm going to make the old mode equal to the current mode. So next time through the loop, if things change, uh, it'll be able to make that comparison with what happened this time through the loop. So we just nip down the bottom now. We'll have a quick look at... Um, send frequency and all it was literally let me just move that down a bit uh, is here so this is the the function send frequency and I'm basically making it a test if the current mode equals one in other words it's transmit um, I make clock two here so clock two becomes the the um, VFO frequency so the main frequency minus the BFO and clock zero becomes the BFO frequency and as you can imagine well, you, that is the dead opposite from receive so if it's not if the current mode is not equal to one in other words it equals zero which means it's on receive which it, it'll it'll do the second part here not the first part so it'll make clock zero our normal VFO frequency, so the frequency of, of operation minus our BFO, so in other words our VFO, and clock 2, which is the standard configuration, equals our BFO. So the only difference between 1, 2, 3, 4 is this last little bit on the expression. I've just reversed it. Uh, and that's all you have to do to have the um, Arduino sense if it's on transmit and receive, uh, and then um, update the SI5351 to, to switch over those two clocks. Uh, and it works a treat. It looks absolutely fine, as you just heard before. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's good. Cool. So like I say, that's probably going to be a configuration I'll, I'll run with uh, moving forward. So what else did I want to talk about? Um, so the main power amplifier here... Uh, um, so on transmit, so this is our desired transmit frequency here coming through this piece of red coax here. Um, that comes through um, into a bandpass filter. So again tuned for 14.15 uh, megahertz. 
um, exactly the same uh, configuration as the receive bandpass figure uh, filter. I'll, I'll group these up later on to, uh, to make them suitable for tramping. Um, I was thinking about having a, a process where I could shear uh, the one filter between the two sides. Uh, but honestly, it gets a little bit too complex when it comes to um, a switching mechanism that, gosh, it was just easy enough just to go and make another one, um, which is exactly what I did. So it comes out of that uh, bandpass filter into the um, driver side of the power amplifier and then into the uh, the main PA there, which is just a simple little IRF 510. Um, and then into a low pass filter, which we saw in the previous video, into our antenna uh, swap over relay, or, which is now on the normally open, is now closed, uh, and then out the antenna. Uh, the, the RF510 uh, didn't do anything fancy with that one, uh, just got a little 10k trim pot here that is uh, varying uh, a DC voltage onto the gate of that MOSFET. Um, it's, it's varying this 5 volt line here, because on the other side we can see a little 5 volt regulator. Um, that's taking 12 volts in and providing uh, 5 volts for the uh, display in the Arduino and then also coming through here um, to try and get a little bit of height there to uh, reduce any coupling uh, goes to that 10k pot. So the trim side or the, the variable side that that um, 10k pot then goes through an, an RFC uh, into the gate of the RF510. That's sitting on around, or more the point, I adjusted that uh, to get a quiescent current through the IRF, the IRF 510 of a hundred milliamps uh, to get that into the class AB uh, to keep it nice and linear. Um, and that works fine, so that's putting out just on uh, 5 watts, which I don't particularly want to go any further for, so I don't um, overtax my little battery pack that I've got for that. Um, and that's essentially it. So um, I think at the stage of the game I will set this aside um, and then uh, the first opportunity when um, the season comes back around to get back into tramping uh, we'll give that a go uh, and we'll take that out. Um, I think it will go into the same little antenna tuner as I made um, a few videos back uh, and then probably into uh, a half wave long wire I think would be the best way of doing it. Okay, well I'm going to um, say 73s and uh, I won't wrap it on any further because I've already been going for 23 odd minutes. Um, what else to do? Oh, in fact I didn't actually talk about that. So that's the first IF amp there. Um, if I spin around this way, you can see it through the first IF amp, up the little brown wire there into the crystal filter back down and then through the second uh, amplifier. What I elected to do just to try and uh, maximize the um, sideband suppression is I've got just a little a little shield there, just a little, that's about an inch high I guess, um, that not only supports the, the relay just to get a little bit higher so I could push the two amplifiers more to the rear for a bit more space saving, uh, but also provides that shielding uh, between the two sides. Uh, it seems to work well. Right, well I think that's probably the highlights um, on that. Um, again, I, I've mentioned it in previous videos, uh, I quite like just making these in the lunch boxes. For me it works out nice and easy. I can put the lid on, I can close it up and I can take that tramping. So, um, for me that's, that's nice and easy. Uh, all I've got to do now is get the old hot glue gun out um, and just do a little bit of gooping around these um, toy roids here just to give them a little more mechanical strength so they're not sort of vibrating uh, and that's all I'll do for that to, to, uh, to make it suitable for humping and dumping as we say. Uh, righty ho, other than that um, just the mechanical construction it's just little pieces of circuit board cut uh, to, to create little standoffs to support for example in this case here the uh, the microphone, not microphone, sorry, the, the headphones um, outputs and then there's some little bracing there and just using solder as, um, as, um, as the, uh, the agent for, for um, keeping everything combined. Wrong wording there but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that seems to work well, you know, it's 
toughest houses is not going anywhere, that's for sure. Right, okay, 73 is all. Um, I hope that was useful. Um, and like I say, I'll make a vid once we get this out for real and um, we actually start to get to use it, which should be good. Lots of fun. Okay, 73s and uh, might go and play around with some SDR. Cheers all.